wasn't going to use the mic. Can you guys hear me? Is that a mic? Is that okay? Yeah, okay. So Connect the Dots uh, is a company that myself and one other person founded. Um, we're event consultants with a software product now that's under construction, but um, it's almost there. Um, we basically work with um, lots of different sectors, but the types of events we work on are quite specific. So they're events that um, have to deliver impact, there has to be measurable outcomes, there usually is a bit of um, diversity of the events or ensuring diversity in the attendees. Um, and um, really what ultimately what we're doing is applying design thinking to events, which um, we hadn't seen before. And we were noticing issues with, in the events industry from a user side, from an attendee side, um, just a kind of uh, lack of thought being put through in, in terms of, in the, of the events themselves. Um, and as event organizers then, how do you actually measure what's happening with your events? And, what, and when you put all that money and effort and time into that event, why isn't there any way of figuring out what exactly you're getting out of it? Um, and that was kind of, from, so from both sides, I guess, that's where we were coming from. Um, this is a kind of an overview of what we do. Um, we kind of work with clients very closely in the beginning in terms of uh, getting to know what their desired outcomes are and what their end result needs to be and work kind of reverse engineer from there. And so that basically involves a lot of auditing and analysis and we create very engaging surveys. Um, so ensuring that the questions are the right types of questions, not too many questions ideally, um, that it's designed nicely and communicated in the right way with the language that's appropriate for that audience. Um, as we've kind of noticed that as well in, in industries that are kind of just shouting out about events but not necessarily tailoring anything to suit the, the actual audience. Um, and I guess that's another kind of bigger picture view of why we're doing what we're doing in that we're kind of noticing more and more, um, and from our perspective anyway, and maybe this is in a room you all kind of go, no, that's not the case, but um, we feel more and more people want more tailored experiences. Um, everything has to be more personalized, experiential, talking to them, and, it's, um, and that's kind of another premise for why we, we had this hunch about what we were doing. Um, what if you gave the control of the power or empowered attendees to have some sort of a say? And that doesn't mean you, you know, and you'll see from the examples I show you now, it doesn't mean, you know, end to end, the audience are completely tailoring your whole event. That's not feasible or, or realistic. Um, but uh, it's about setting parameters with the event organizer and then letting the audience have some sort of a say. And they develop a sense of ownership then around that as well. Um, and are more likely to attend, which is the, the bums on seats, the base of the kind of the bottom line, really. Um, um, so from the, at, uh, the uh, event organizer perspective, if you want to see results and if it's all about getting people in the room, then it's all about getting to know those people. So if you think about product design, you wouldn't put out a product without doing any market research or testing. So it's the same type of principle for events. You need to... Um, get to know what you're doing and, and test and stress test your, your assumptions and your theories. So uh, this is kind of how we've broken down the steps of our process. Um, it'll probably become much clearer as well when I show you the case studies, but um, auditing the current state is um, really kind of f finding out first of all what the client or the event organizer needs um, and uh, making that kind of list of things maybe that are working or not working from previous events. Um, and then the second step then is, uh, okay, in this case, I've, sh I've put listening to your employees because we do sometimes internal work, um, so their staff might need to have a say, but uh, you could also substitute that for a pu the public or um, your target audience. Um, so that's our, our listening piece is kind of related to our software, which um, I'm gonna show you now in a second. Um, and that's our kind of our, our gathering of data and our analysis of that data, and then how that data links to it, um, interesting and creative and innovative event ideas or event uh, formats. Then uh, we engage, so that's all about um, data-driven decisions. So that's the next step, I guess, um, which is, okay, great, you've got all that data. Now you uh, are overwhelmed with information. How do you then make kind of strategy around that and how do you take anything uh, useful from it. So that's kind of where we come in again in terms of providing ideas um, um, and solutions. So uh, this is the co-created program then that you'll see once that's all been kind of 
pulled together. Um, and then the measurable results comes afterwards when we uh, do an event post-event survey that, um, that then we can then cross-analyze what's happened, what happened before and afterwards, what were the changes that, were, uh, that occurred um, and what do we need to action now going forward? What are the next steps from this event? Um, so it wasn't just a waste of anyone's time. But um, this is a kind of a quick snapshot of where our survey uh, platform is going. Um, we wanted to reinvigorate form filling and make it a bit more interesting. Um, our surveys are part of the registration form and the registration process, so that's how we kind of enforce people to, to do them. Um, but uh, they have to be a little bit more interesting and a bit more exciting to do. And so we've kind of put in little features here and there that make it a bit more rewarding as you're going through it um, to actually uh, fill it out. Here's um, a snapshot of our clients. So it's really, really varied. Um, a lot of the work, though, has been with uh, public sector. So um, Dublin City Council, Houses of the Oireachtas, we worked with a committee on uh, climate action, environment and communications. Definitely got that wrong. Um, and it's, it's varied. It's very varied. That's all I can say about that. But I think that the, the focus is on the, the, pr the productivity of the event and what that event really means and if it's and if the client really sees the need that we saw in, in that in the event space and so that's why it kind of goes across everything um, so I was going to just quickly explain two different types of events that focus in on the public sector and um, uh, and then just show you two, two different videos because I know I've got loads of time and I might have just sped through half of my presentation um, so this was for College Green. It was called Reimagine College Green. It was about Dublin City Council. Um, and we were asked to basically help them with their public consultation process. Um, so I guess from what I've explained before in that graphic, it kind of kind of maybe get a sense of why we might have applied to this in terms of making sure they had the diversity. So um, making sure they were reaching all the right user groups or groups that would be interested in design. So there was you know, the likes of cycling groups, um, businesses, taxi men, you know, it was it was a really, um, of course, it's a public space, so we just needed to make sure that we had the right representation there. So we ensured that every table was diverse. Um, a key part of our process, aside from all that other stuff I talked about, is, is once you actually get to the event itself, um, that the design thinking doesn't stop there. It has to continue through. There has to be a cohesion throughout the whole experience because the user is the attendee and they need to feel that they're being handheld through this process is what our theory is. So we designed all the worksheets, we designed all the, the slides, we designed, um, we made sure that there was facilitators at each table um, and we kind of just needed to really ensure that in those two hours or whatever it was that we had, we really needed to ensure we were capturing all that information because the participants were informing something quite important, you know, the design of a public space and they were going to give ideas around that. And so um, we just had to make sure all bases were covered on that side. So I think I'm going to let this video hopefully do the talking. Tonight we're in the round room in the mansion house having this amazing design workshop, public design workshop, to explore what people would like to see for a new college green, a reimagined college green. And I suppose it's just so exciting standing here and looking at how people are working so passionately and they're so engaged and they're clearly really into this process. They're clearly sharing ideas, they're clearly enthused. It's, it's wonderful, I think it's going to be a rewarding evening for people. I think we're going to get some seriously interesting ideas coming out of this evening. The aim of the event, which is called Imagine College Green, uh, it's to invite the public to come and look at the first stage of the design process. The event is 25 tables of seven people at each table discussing what can be done at College Green. The document that comes out of this event goes to the winning design team who will be putting together the actual design of the, of the space. It's 
all about getting people together to collaborate and getting really diverse perspectives and diverse voices from the voices that aren't heard often to the ones that are heard and getting them all to have an equal voice. We try to make sure that the space is very inviting and friendly and warm and um, we feel comfortable and safe um, to kind of make their opinions and perspectives um, known and to share it with the group. Yeah, it was eye-opening to see that many people are very mobilised by, by things happening in the city. Before the event, we really asked people what they were looking to get out of it, what topics they want to talk about. So we tailored the entire event around that and around them. Well, it's an amazing event because we're bringing members of, of the public into giving us their ideas for what College Green should be. The city's too important to leave just to the architects or the urban planners. We need to listen to the voices of people who are going to go to College Green, people who live in the city, people who shop in the city, visitors. So tonight is all about all of the citizens being involved. We want to make sure we listen to these ideas and hopefully incorporate them into the future of this space. So this example um, is uh, the, with the Committee for um, Communications and the topic of the event was uh, future broadcast. It was the future funding of public service broadcasting. Um, so it wasn't a public consultation in the sense it wasn't just open for everyone. It was uh, a much more kind of challenging uh, private event, I guess you'd call it, for, for the, the key stakeholders in that sector. So media of all sorts, um, print, uh, uh, TV, radio um, yeah it was it was all the kind of heads of all of those areas and um, and and also the kind of changing media so Facebook and things like that um, so this again similar format and just similar process as well in that it had to be you know diversity at each table all the worksheets had, sheets had to be designed um, what you're looking at I guess I should probably explain is something we tried out for this because we felt it was such a huge room of people and it was such an interesting topic they would should maybe try and um, we should figure out a way in which they can learn from each other and what they what they think about this they, you know this topic so we used a bit of software um, that uh, basically was like Twitter feed um, and we could get them to vote on things we would pop up a question they could vote uh, using their phones and they'd type in responses as well on, on certain um, um, uh, statements we'd make or questions we'd pose um, and uh, yeah so I guess that was that's just a very kind of quick overview of that uh, oh that's there's a video on that as well actually yeah We're here this morning to look at public service broadcasting under three main headings. The first is to define it as a concept. The second is how we're going to fund it. And we're also going to be looking at the rise of digital in advertising and media. The reason we're here today is to get many people who are in the media who are in competition with one another, get them to sit around a table to come up with solutions on how best to adapt to these digital times. You'll have iPads on your table. You can think of a thought that you want to broadcast back to the room, and it will show up on the main screen. Yeah, I think it's going really well. The workshop format seems to work. It's quite fast, it's quite buzzy. People are getting through the discussions and sending their inputs to the top table. Uh, so I think it's, it, there's a good, good atmosphere, I think, and it's going, going really well. The thing that news outlets need to struggle with online is having a direct relationship with Actually having your news app on people's home screen meant that that was a good unmediated relationship. We're trying to design and regulate something that's very fast moving and that we could be here this time next year and be having a completely different conversation. Often when we get into these discussions on digital technologies and platforms, there's this sense that oh, the horse has bolted out of that stable and there's nothing we can do, which is so utterly ridiculous. There's lots we can do. 
we're doing here as a result of this is putting together a report which will go to the Minister, Dennis Nocton, and will be laid before both houses of the Oireachtas. Culture and creativity are the greatest assets of any society. It's our duty to do everything we can to unleash the full creative potential of our people. The key thing that we've realised in terms of our process and where it works best is in situations where there's something quite complex, there's something quite um, tricky, or um, there's a lot of risk management needed, there's a lot of facilitation needed, mediation needed, maybe um, tensions are quite high. Um, and that's kind of where I guess the process helps because you're trying to all constantly eliminate any surprises with what we're doing. So you're constantly trying to test assumptions, understand what people want, um, and, and, and do, do better with events and make work events work better and work more and work harder. Um, uh, this is just, I wanted to show just some few images of just other events we've done with, um, not just on public sector, not just on very difficult uh, and challenging subjects, also when people are just kind of wanting to get together and learn about things and have a good time. <laughs> So this was at the Goethe Institute. Um, it was on a, a quite a heavy subject about uh, surveillance and um, data privacy, but it was lots of different types of people coming together to have food and talk about it and talk about the, the possible solutions and the challenges that they're facing around that. Um, this is an event we also did at the, the Goethe Institute um, where all the food was tailored to the topic as well. Um, and again, it was a chat around uh, kind of civic space and how to better use vacant space for environmental and cultural and social uses. Um, uh, we're also currently um, realising that we can work with other event companies um, because the process doesn't have to be, you know, us in at every point. The, um, at the point where the data comes in and it's been analysed and it's in a report form before the event, that's when we actually can hand it over to an event company to take it from there. So. Um, our forte isn't in event logistics. It's you know it's event strategy and event intelligence. But um, so we're working with a number of different event companies at the moment to try to get something over the line where we can test this with them um, and work with bigger clients that they have because they'd have a bigger reach for them. So um, that's something to kind of leave on. I think I hope I haven't gone over time. Thank you.